Hello YouTube, this is Bruno. I have created another brewing automat, and this time with a little bit different design goals. The first goal, naturally, is that it brews fully automatically the potions that I want, up to a certain fill degree, or redstone level, on these chests. The second design goal, it's one white tileable, so each of these chests can have an individual potion recipe. And the third design goal is pretty much all of the redstone is hidden, most of the redstone is underground. This is really everything that I have to cover up with the building to make this completely hidden. Now, underground we do have a bit of redstone. And the last and very important design goal is the system is very lag friendly. We try to avoid hoppers as far as possible. For example, to get the items into this chest we will use dropper elevators. That will only take up CPU time if they are active. Pretty much all of the hoppers are locked. All in all, I'm very happy with the system. It didn't take too long to build, maybe two hours, including the input of the ingredients. It's perfect for a little server to run in the spawn chunks. This is a community brewery, so all players can just come here and pick up whatever potion they want. And the system will refill these chests automatically. So for example, I typically use a lot of fire res if I'm in the nether. So I just grab the potions that I want, and after about 15 minutes, this chest will be filled again. In a way, this is a follow-up to a video I made almost a year ago, where I went a bit overboard with my last brewing system. That was the system I built on my last survival world. It was a nice design exercise, but it had two drawbacks. One, it was rather complicated to build. And two, you could order like several batches of potions. For example, if you wanted this potion, you would just press this button three times. However, you had to wait until all of these lamps were off and then you could order the next batch. And it turned out I didn't need this complete flexibility. Here I could select all the ingredients, always say do I, do I want a stronger potion or do I want a longer acting potion, do I want a splash potion and whatnot. However, I only used the same configuration. For example, for weakness, I would always have a longer acting potion, doesn't work otherwise, and I would use a splash potion. All of the selection process is really unnecessary. So the new system just has a fixed set of predefined potions. So let's head to creative and show you the design. Here we are in the world download. The idea behind this brewing automat is as follows. I read each chest individually and the way it's set up, the out signal strength is always set for two chests. For example, these two would have the same signal strength, but you can set the signal strength for each pair of chests individually. So for example, Maybe you don't really know which potion should go into this chest, so you just have a placeholder in there with a signal strength of one. So this chest would contain only very few potions. Each of the chests will go into one slice of this ingredient selector. So this part defines which ingredients go into a water stream. Then the ingredients are sorted, more correctly ordered. So you know for, po for potions everything has to be in the correct order. First the nether ward, then the second ingredient, say a golden carrot, and so on. So this is the yellow part. And then we have a little brewing stand that is fully automatic. So it will start brewing as soon as the ingredients arrive. And it will output the potions into this water stream. And here is a bit of supply with water bottles. So whenever the brewing stand is active, we will have fresh water here. Here we have a replacement system for blaze powder. Then the items go into our elevator, depending on which ingredients we had, and will be transported up to the chests. Here the items that unlock the hoppers go into a dropper, and once this hopper is unlocked next, this item will be output into this water stream and be returned down there. So unlike other systems, all of these chests or all of these ingredients will use only one brewing stand, which makes the system fairly slow. But this is not really a problem because how many potions do you need? So it might take a couple of hours until all the potions are filled. But after that, the system will rebrew them automatically. So how does this work? We have a system that outputs from time to time an item into this water stream so that it can be picked up by, uh, by these hoppers. And if it goes into a hopper, the item will travel down and we will have a signal here and the signal will be relayed to this redstone torch tower. Let's have a look at one slice of the system. So this is over here. So let's say the item goes in here. We would read in this hopper a signal for a moment 
and we would relay a system here to this redstone torch tower. Here we have set it up for four hoppers. We could add more hoppers, just adding a redstone torch and another block here. So now we could do potions with five or six ingredients. Each of these droppers will be triggered once. So each of these droppers, they contain the ingredients for the potion, will output one ingredient. So for example, this does a fermented spider eye, a redstone dust, and a gunpowder. This will be a splash potion of weakness. So these items go into a brewing machine. The potion will be created and the potion will be output into this water stream. If we return to the slice, you can see that if an item is in here, we also read it on this side. And if we have a signal here, we change this T flip-flop because we will have a signal here, this item will be moved upwards. And this means this hopper will be open. Typically it's locked, so nothing can get me here. But if we send an item down here, we will A, output the ingredients for the potion here and B, unlock this hopper. And if the potions come in via a water stream over this ice, they will be picked up by this hopper, go into this dropper elevator and be transported to this chest. Now let's put it all together. Let's say we want more potions for these first chests. So we just increase the signal strength in the barrel here. And there's another barrel down here because this is kind of an AP configuration. And now you can see the redstone block was pulled up for these four rows. So these four hoppers will be open. Now, if we put an item, any item in here, then this item will go into the first empty hopper and activate this line. The first thing that really happens is that all of these flip-flops are reset. So we get a redstone signal here, which means all of these hoppers are locked. And then an item comes in via this water stream. It will go into the first hopper that is unlocked, corresponding to the first chest that needs potions. And it will throw the ingredients into this stream. And later, once the potions are brewed, they will be returned here. And only one of these will be open. So the potions go into the correct hopper here on this side. Here we have a hopper clock that we have set to one minute, which is kind of the minimum time required to brew one potion. I pretty much use always three or more ingredients. So we have a hopper clock that triggers once every minute. However, if our brewing system is still occupied, if it's still brewing, we will have a redstone signal here. So this clock will not be triggered. This clock will only be triggered if it finished its job. And then it will output one item into this water stream. The item goes into the first empty hopper. Potion is brewed. Items will be output into this water stream, go into the correct dropper elevator, and then this pulse extender will eventually run out and we will have the next item. If the system is idle, then we will just have one item travel through the system once per minute. This doesn't really create a lot of lag. With a bit more redstone in the back, we could detect if any of the chests needs potions and trigger the clock only then. But this would require just a little bit more space and since the system is already very lag efficient, I chose the more compact solution. And that's basically the whole system. Now the brewing system was completely designed by myself. I covered the item orderer and the brewing stand in past videos. I will link these in the description. The dropper elevator was designed by Gnemon as part of his multi-item sorter. This system could be pretty much extended to any number of chests because all of this is basically extensible. So these water streams can be extended indefinitely. These systems are all one way tileable. So these water streams can be extended like that. And the only thing where we would have to take care to extend it would be to have this reset line that resets all the flip-flops. So this one redstone line actually can handle only 15 blocks but there are ways to extend this, so no problem there. On our server, we decided to put this in our spawn chunks. The system is very lag friendly. The hoppers take only 0.06 milliseconds. Items take 0.03 milliseconds. This brewing system does not have an automatic refill of the ingredients. You can set up a dropper full for each ingredient, which with stackable items equates to over 1,700 potions or over 25 double chests which I believe is enough for a survival world. If you want to brew Turtle Master 
or perhaps future Minecraft versions have other potions with unstackable ingredients, then you could add an automatic refill system for one ingredient like that and store a larger quantity for this one ingredient here. For the blaze powder, we do have a refill system. This dropper leading into the brewing stand has one slot for blaze powder which always remains filled. A barrel full of blaze powder will give you something like 10,000 potions along with the dropper here. So I also believe we don't need an automated refill system for that. There you have it, a rather small system, one wide tileable, to provide you with all the potions you need. Thanks for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, and until the next time, bye bye!